we have risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Scholars Wrestling Show, episode 170. I am your man behind the microphone, Scholar Jeff. To my right is Scholar Tarek. We are at 170. We are 30 episodes away from episode 200. We gotta do something big for episode 200. I know it's we got 30 weeks to uh, figure that shit out, but you know what? Just the thought. We're almost at 200 episodes of Scholars of Wrestling. The energy is coursing through the veins. The power of the warrior. The power of the clear liquid. The power! It's a new day. Yes, it is. Boom. The power of the memes. (laughs) Isn't that right, Scholar Brian? That was more exciting than anything that happened in the WWE last week. (laughs) <laughs> I was going to say, at least you didn't say it this way. <laughs> it drove you away. You were just like, yeah, I'm just not there. Last, last, last week was like, I've totally got nothing to say at all about anything. Oh, you certainly can't say it's it about been, this week. Nope. <laughs> so yeah, let's. there's so much to talk about. Let's dive right in. But first, let, we got to kick things off right with a little bit of backstage news. Indeed. Let's start the show how we always start the show, by peeking behind that curtain and checking in on a little... Backstage news! 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 news. Not nah, man! <laughs> yes, and I believe you've got a little something you want to talk about. Isn't that right, Tark? It's kind of funny. It's not... It's... it's Sort of backstage news, but also not backstage news because I'm throwing that into topics for discussion. Dun, dun, dun. I'm what you writing got? it on the chalkboard because it's a chalkboard uh, card we're going to use. <laughs> for this. All right. Yes, the what bi- you got? The big news that came out of last week, and people are still talking about it this week, is that WWE is planning on doing another superstar shakeup after SummerSlam. Hmm. Which... The only real different factor on this one is superstars from the main roster can go down to NXT. Uh Aha. What are your thoughts on that? And A, what are your thoughts on that announcement? And B, who do you see from the main who would you want to see from the main roster go down to NXT? I think in general I like it. I think it opens up a wide variety of potential challengers and new, new fresh new blood. People who just need to get freshened up for whatever reason. In general, I think it's a good, a good, a very good idea. That said, there's only one name that immediately jumps to mind whenever I think of this, in terms of a, a main roster wrestler going down to NXT. And honestly, the first that one name that keeps coming to mind for me is Dolph Ziggler. Mm-hmm. I mean, I the way he is now, I just don't see him. I just keep seeing him just treading water and stagnating, just shifting from mid card feud to mid card feud. If you put some, yeah, if you put something on like him in NXT post the next Takeover Brooklyn after SummerSlam, to me that seems like a major angle. It would be just the thing to freshen up NXT, especially if people from NXT get called up, which there's a strong possibility that they might. The. Superstar shakeup in and of itself, skeptical, because he talks about a wide variety of challengers and all that. What happened with the last one? They they went to different brands. You didn't really get a variety of new challengers. You got basically the same feuds jumping over from Raw to SmackDown. The, the case in point: Ambrose and the Miz. The feud did never end. The feud that never ended until last week. <laughs> but so it's like I'm skeptical because first of all, I believe it's too soon. Them say them going to this again so soon after the first one that makes me think that they think that the first superstar shakeup was a complete failure. Which eh might have been. You never know. It depends on how you look at it. I but, I, I wouldn't say even call it a a failure in that sense. No, just... I'm sa- I'm I'm saying that the w- that them doing it so soon makes me think that the WWE thinks that it was a failure, and they need to do it again because it didn't work the first time. Hmm. That that's where I was going with that. As for the NXT deal, 
that is a wrinkle that I did not know. I only knew that they were put that they were planning on another superstar shakeup. So, is it a good idea? Of course it is, especially for the fact that once you bring up the new crowd after SummerSlam, what do they really got in NXT? As of right now, who okay. do they have right now? Who do they have? Who do they have after the new crowd gets bought up? Oscar is gonna get bought up. Bobby Roode is gonna get bought up. Okay, you're probably gonna. So it's like after that, who do you have? You have Roderick Strong. You have you have Drew McIntyre. You have Ember Moon. Those are your big three. Aleister Black. That. It's not really getting built up. I mean, big with, right now. with with some of the bigger names going up, you could see. I could see. Like, okay, it. now that those names are gone, they're gone to the main roster. They're building names for either Raw or SmackDown. Now you have the names who haven't really gotten a chance to shine. Now they have their opportunity to shine. They can yeah. become the bigger names. But now that once again skeptical because. WWE talent can go down to NXT makes me think that WWE thinks that once they bring these people up, NXT doesn't have enough talent to get by on its own. Not, not, that's, that's not how I see it. That That's how I feel that WWE that's, sees it. WWE sees it. I see where he's coming And from. yeah, the major name is of course Dolph Ziggler because what the hell is he doing right now? Seriously. He hasn't been. I, on, I think they're just giving him time off because he hasn't been exa- seen it. Exactly. Weeks. So it's like he's he's the number one name to go down. Well, okay. yes and no. He's. I didn't say he's the number one name per se. I I really think that he's the only one that makes complete sense as of now because if, because he's doing absolutely nothing and he's supposedly one of your. One of the guys that everybody knows, everybody likes at some kind of deal, and he's not doing anything. Supposedly, so bring him. Supposedly, somebody, if, I well, love Dolph Ziggler. Well, yeah, hold on, person. hold on. <laughs> if, if that he's the only one who makes sense if you bring him down the NXT and use him in the in the way I just described. However, you can put guys on the NXT roster also for enhancement too. What do I mean by that? Well. This is the kind of thing where it actually sends me back mentally to, of all things, the the WWE ECW run. Where if you think back to the original premise behind that show, you had a mix of ECW veterans, the mainstays, and a whole new crop of up-and-coming fresh talent. People they wanted to sort of groom and improve, so to speak. That I believe that's while the execution may be different now, I believe the the aim and the focus is still in that same place. I would say the execution. Which means I'm sorry. Can you yeah, me? which means that again, if you want to inject some new life into the NXT title feud, for instance, like let's say that Bobby Roode drops the title to Drew McIntyre. Either let's say either Drew McIntyre or Bobby Roode get called up to the main roster again. There's a little bit of a void. That's when you bring in Dolph Ziggler to fill that spot. But let's say that uh, someone lesser gets called up. Let's say again when Elias Sampson got called up, I didn't see that at all. I thought that he was completely crashing and burning in e- in ECW in NXT. And I was just like, okay, they're going to repackage this tool and then whatever. But no, they brought him up to the main roster. He's filling a spot. And I'd say he's actually doing better in that spot now than he was in NXT. Uh, Dubious results, hey. But <laughs> it was more than I saw happening at uh, the time. Fair enough. <laughs> so my point is, like, let's say, like, pick some random mid-card guy from NXT right now. Let's say... No way Jose gets called up. Who's to say someone doesn't go down and make use of that spot? Like, say, a Kurt Hawkins, who gets suddenly very hungry after going on his 100-match losing streak and said, you know what, I'm going back down to NXT. I volunteered to go down to NXT. 
now I need to get back to square one. Now I'm going to climb my ass back all the way up to the top. Suddenly, there's this freshness now. There's a new spin on an old character that we've seen for a while. Taking this example to a slightly different extreme. C.J. Parker, do you remember him? No. He is, yeah, he's that sort of hippie guy who got beaten down by a... by Kevin Owens in his debut match in NXT. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that guy. I guess that just shows you how <laughs> memorable he is. Well, hey, that's where he was in NXT. Immediately after that, he went. He repackaged himself as Juice Robinson and went to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I've seen some of his matches since then. I've seen some of his promos since then. He's doing damn good work. He's not going to be challenging Okada. But actually, you know what? I take that back because you know what? That's exactly what happened in the G1 the Climax. The juice is loose! That's exactly what happened in the G1 Climax. He had a great match with Okada. Not for the title, but he still wrestled him. He still lost, but he looked good in defeat. And afterwards, he cut a really fire promo. That was way better than anything I've seen him cut in NXT. Is, it, mm-hmm. is that his uh, catchphrase? I believe it. I the believe Jesus it might was. be. But either way, <laughs> either way, my point remains the same. Sometimes you don't need to always put. When you transfer a new guy, you don't always have to put him at the top. You don't always have to put him at the bottom. But as long as you use the right guy in the right way, in a new way, that can be just what they need to reinvigorate the character and add a lot more to whatever show you're watching. That's I, my thesis. For me. I'm gonna just say it right now. I I'm not a huge fan of having the superstar shake up so soon after the first one. I actually would not mi- wouldn't mind do- them doing it after every WrestleMania. Okay, that that I can see yeah. the execution. I like the idea fundamentally, but the, yeah, the execution can be very. It just flawed. I feel like it's very sh- it's very. It's been five months. Exactly. It it that's too, just it's the, too soon. That's, that's the, why I'm like. What, that's why I feel like the WWE feels like the first one was a failure. Because it's like five months? That's all you gave it? <laughs> you see, I can understand where that logic comes from, but it's more of an immediate reaction. And to me, the immediate reaction I heard when they're doing another superstar shakeup is more like, okay, apparently the WWE thinks we've got an audience full of uh, chipmunks on pixie sticks where we just can't focus and we keep forgetting what happened a few months ago. Okay, whatever. But yeah, I definitely see what you mean. You know, and again, it's all in the execution, like you said. Personally, in my opinion, I feel like they should add more na- take some names from Raw and add them to SmackDown more than anything. Have I yeah, because because Raw, Raw is obliterated. Raw is packed. It is packed with some really big names. Raw is too packed. That's exactly the problem. that exactly. <laughs> it's too packed. And SmackDown, yes, they're building up newer names. They have, out of nowhere, people being WWE champion and all that. Um, at least they're at, they're trying with their smaller talent. But I feel like the one thing that's hurting SmackDown more is is just the fact that my, now that John Cena is a quote quote free agent, your biggest name on that roster is Randy Orton. It's not it's not really it's not really that big a deal that much these days. And when you have a great amount of names on Raw, that can help just put some recognized big names in to get people more invested, more invested in the people that are actually, excuse me, that are actually starting to build character on this one. I want to see Shinsuke Nakamura versus, I actually wanted to see Shinsuke Nakamura versus The Miz before uh, the trade before this shakeup or uh, originally happened. I want to see uh, Seth Rollins move to SmackDown and all that. What can he do for the blue brand? You want to know what I want to see? Screw the shakeup. Bring back the draft. That was fun. I agree. Bring, that, ba- that bring back fun. the random. The the air quotes random draft. That was By a the fun. Raw, th- what, the Raw vs. SmackDown edition of the draft, where it was yeah. like a Raw vs. SmackDown guy, and whoever wins gets the selection. Yeah, 
And and it's fun because even though you have a clue of who's going where, it's still you still get that fifteen seconds of who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Where <laughs> it's like the Royal Rumble it's effect. A, yeah, you, you think like you've got that, a rough idea of what's gonna happen, but there's still a, 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 the presentation is still fun. Exactly. Instead of oh, this random guy just shows up. Hey, I'm here now. <laughs> that. Uh, th- the way that they did the shake up the first time, I didn't like it because I was hoping it would be something like that, like uh, like a random. You know, it's gonna be a bunch of big names because it's the first one, but it'll be like randomized and all that throughout the show instead of oh, four people came out at once <laughs> and did hmm. and did that. So, it's... but uh, I I don't. Very skeptical because of everything that we've mentioned so far. I don't know how I feel about the NXT thing because who are you going to bring down? Who are you going to bring up? That kind of deal. Like, there's normally you have a clue of who's of who's doing what. Not here, and so it's like. Uh, what kind of name power would they be bringing down to NXT? If it's just guys like Kurt, Kurt Hawkins and and that, like it's like okay, what was the point of that? Yeah, Ser- that's kind of well. That's kind of so, what I was attempting to illustrate here. And with what you were saying before, fool, about like Kurt, if Kurt Hawkins goes down and basically starts at square one, starts brand new, starts to refresh his character. I honestly think Dolph Ziggler should do the same. I cuz once again I'm I'm on that boat that Dolph should be moved to NXT, but mainly just to A is like he's he's a name in, for WWE mm-hmm. and he needs something he needs to basically start something new and fresh with his character and NXT is the perfect stage with the smaller crowd to basically start br- not fully start brand new, but to basically Test out different... Test, yeah, test out right. something new for his character. Right. And functionally, everyone who would go down to NXT, who is an established veteran from the main roster, would be doing that. The difference is between Ziggler and uh, Kurt Hawkins, uh, just two different tiers of wrestlers who've gotten to two different places in, on the main roster, the function is the same, but the story, the plot, is different. Ziggler might be going... might. Fresh, well, yeah, he's definitely going to be freshing up his character, but he's he might do that in a different way. Whereas he'll ch- come out right out of nowhere and challenge either Bobby Roode or uh, Drew McIntyre right out of the gate. Whereas someone like Kurt Hawkins, they're already at the bottom, so their story or storyline is going to be. I'm already at the bottom. I cannot sink any lower. I'm climbing my way all the way back up to the top, and now I'm hungry. Maybe that can even meet a face term for Kurt Hawkins. Again, the function is the same. You're obviously going back. You're obviously giving. You're freshening up these characters, but you're just going to be doing them in different ways that's appropriate for the spot that they're in right now. I don't see them doing anything like that with Kurt Hawkins. I just think he's stuck. He's going to be stuck in the space that he's in now. And maybe not. And the only per- the one person who I actually can see be put in the situation you were just explaining for Kurt Hawkins, Apollo Cruz. Right. And again, he's, he he has can... a better chance of actually starting brand new and he's actually the... and actually building something that more than Kurt Hawkins right. is. And you're and I totally agree with you. But again, that wasn't truly the point. The point I was trying to make was this this is just one of many different possibilities that can come from the, a superstar shakeup like this that we, we generally agree is going to, will be happening sometime after SummerSlam and that's just my case of how I'm why I'm I'm not ready to throw it out throw this out or discount it just yet. I'm just like I said, I was in it for me too soon, but I am intrigued. Yeah. I, obviously, time will tell with all of this, so we'll just have to tune in and see. Speaking of tuning in, there's still a lot of uh, wrestling this week, especially with Monday Night Raw. Nice addition leading into Raw versus SmackDown Live. 
Smack down mall. Dig, 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 dog. Break it. Yes. Anyway, yeah. Going into SmackDown, I just sort of turned... It was one of those weeks where I just turned on Raw absentmindedly, and then all of a sudden, okay, Brock Lesnar's here. Okay. He's here to do business. It's Seriously. Actually, it actually is really funny, because when Kurt Angle first came out, he basically did the one thing that people have been complaining they've been doing on Raw and SmackDown a lot recently, just having uh, an authority figure come out, greet everyone, hope you enjoy the show, moving on. I like the fact that Brock and Paul Heyman, no announcement, they just was like, okay, we're here, and we're going to basically put our foot down. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. I see you. I see what you're doing. (laughs) But this actually leads credence to the rumors that after SummerSlam, Brock Lesnar is done and heading back to UFC. That's that's a rumor that's been going around. This actually lends credence to it. The question is, is this the WWE feeding into the rumor, or is it, or is this actually happening? When it comes to <laughs> when it comes to someone like Paul Heyman, I can it. It's hard to really answer that because, uh. in my personal opinion, I. Th- like I think they're just you I think they're using it just to feed the rumors. Like I think he may would possibly will still show up in UFC. He threw his name he threw his name into the what's the word? Uh the bowl the I I'll just say the bowl. The testing uh, pool, whatever. The testing they call pool. It. Yeah. That's that's and it. there and there's also the possibility that hey, they ran out of dates and his next and this next set of dates doesn't come up until WrestleMania sees it again. So, exactly. Yeah. I like, lost the title. Like, I'm out, but he'll come back. Exactly. Like, yeah, I'm like, I'll just still I'll just still be in contract with WWE. I'm just doing something in between. Uh, uh, in between. But for all storyline purposes, he gone. <laughs> but I I like how they uh, I like how they worked it in with the rumors going around and all that. Whether it's whether it's true or whether they're they're uh, playing a, with it. It it was a good, it it it's a talking point going into SummerSlam. Finally, something to talk about. Plus, it's a testament to the skills of Paul Heyman. Let's be real. Yeah, finally something to talk about about this pay per view. But okay, we hadn't watched SmackDown yet, so I was no, not sir. looking. I was not looking forward to SummerSlam before this week. I'll say that much right there. Yeah. But, but we'll get to all that. But with Brock Lesnar, that was the first time where I was like, oh, something to talk about. I love, something to speculate going into SummerSlam. I just love, like, basically the whole ultimatum. It's like, oh, if he, lo- if he loses the belt, we're gone. You- <laughs> but he's not going to lose. <laughs> but he- yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good. It was good. It was, a gr- it was actually... It was a great, it- great start. Like, well... It was a semi decent start with the traditional Kurt Angle. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Enjoy the show. And <coughs> now you just go all of a sudden, you now stuff the adrenaline. Yeah. And yeah, that's what that was just really caught it off guard for me too. Just like, okay, we're we're kicking things off fast here. Okay, I'm locked in. Alright. So yeah, that happened, and then we also got the Hardys defeating the club, which, again, it's another Hardy Boys match. But I'm not sure if you've been picking up on this, but it looks like they're using the they're using their different terminology again. They're using the the awoke awoken a lot, and then they're just. It's I, this is really looking like they're doing something here. The question I've got for you guys is: Is this just sort of a one-off, or is this something they're doing to sort of bring the broken Hardys to WWE just as awoken Hardys or woken Matt or something like that? Here's my problem with this whole segment and this whole little tag team situation going on between the Hardys, the club, and the revival. Okay, they're all talking about fighting for the number one contendership 
right? They're all talking about being number one contenders and all that. It doesn't matter at this point because they're not going to be any of the three of them because because of what happened later on in the night that that telegraphed what the tag team title match is going to be for SummerSlam. These three teams are in a holding pattern. So for me, okay, these segments are pointless. And for me personally, these segments don't matter because they're not doing anything for the bigger picture going into SummerSlam. It's just a holding pattern. Three teams fighting each other for a month. That I I like the revival did a good job on commentary, good heel commentary. I for for me the Hardy boy the Hardys were just the Hardys. Whether they're using new terminology or not, nothing really changed. It's the same. The, even in the fight up on the up on the ramp with the three teams and them doing it's still typical Hardys. There's nothing broken or or woken or awoken or whatever they're doing. It they're saying new things on commentary about them, but. I'm not seeing anything from the Hardys that are showing me that they're trying to do anything different, bringing anything different into the characters. And the, and the problem with this segment is they're the, the revival are all talking about being number one contenders. N- none of these three teams are going to be in the title picture for SummerSlam. Mm. So these segments for me are just oh. They're cool. These guys are getting on TV. It, they're it's not really doing anything for the big picture for me. It's just something to watch. I wouldn't. I wouldn't fully go that it's completely pointless. Like, yes, it's getting them TV time. It's getting them TV time. But I think that's that's the whole point of this. Yes, we're, we'll talk about what the title match is going to be for SummerSlam later, but. At least we actually are getting these guys on our TV. They're getting exposure, like the revival. The revival, yeah, for the har- for us, the hardcore crowd. Yeah. They are like we know who they are. We know what they're about. For, but for the mainstream audience, we don't. They don't really know that much about the revival or anything like that. And this is giving them good exposure, especially going after established veterans like the Hardys and yeah. somewhat established veterans somewhat with the uh with the club yeah at least at least i don't care that they're not going for the tag team titles right now but i'm i'm i am glad that they are still getting the exposure it's expanding a tag team division which we've talked about in this in the past many times that it was very very thin at least because it's most of the time just the tag team title match and nothing else at least there is now something else for us to discuss with it and I, I'm I, all for it. Do I see like I I have seen the awoken hinting that they're going for, but it is look like that's what they're going for since you know Impact whatever Global Impact Wrestling. I don't know Global Impact Wrestling Glo- Force. Sure. <laughs> since they're, yeah, since like they're being of, since they're being douchebags uh, of this whole legalization with a broken gimmick. So is there the they're trying to do something to fill in that void. Um, yeah. Here's here's my thing with that. Okay, it took them long enough. I, I mean, like, r- really? D- you don't have broken. You couldn't have changed it to, sooner. Mm. It's like a week after WrestleMania, you could have. You, well, it looks like you could have used trying. a different. You could have used a different word and just stuck it in there, and there you go. That's it. But, well, it's not just the word. It's the it's the mannerisms. It's the charisma. Well, yeah. It's all that stuff. Yeah, and but you could have had that character right away. You with but it's but WWE is like we have to bring them back and showcase them the way they were, and then no, I, you I, really I, don't. You you really don't like you did, WrestleMania. You did that, and it was awesome. Okay, now. I'm not invested in the Hardys anymore. I'm really not. You killed it for me because because you kept them as the WWE Hardys for too long. Yeah, the big winners of this 
of this little feud right here are the revival, and I'm glad for that because they're. I believe that they're the best tag team going. Okay, they have been since the NXT days, and it sucked when uh, it was Dash that got hurt, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sucked when he went down because it looked like they were going to start them off huge when they first came up. So, but the Hardys don't really do anything for me anymore. They're a nostalgia act at this point until they actually man up and do and actually do the thing. It's nice that they're it's nice that they're getting the ball rolling, but the mannerisms haven't gotten there yet. So I'm like, it's still the regular Hardys. The yeah. the commentary is using new words. Okay, cool. <laughs> no, yeah, but obviously it's still very, very early on with this whole thing. But it was enough club, to keep it was enough to keep me interested. And and the club put a fork in them. They're done. <laughs> They've been done for months now. I don't I don't care about the club anymore. Well, speaking of tag teams and stables, there's still plenty of stuff happening on Raw in that department. Uh, Fool, what do you got? Uh, really all. It's just basically segueing into the tag team title match that we were going to get for SummerSlam. They started hinting at it now with uh, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins continuing to stitch up their friend, the Shield brethren, whatnot. And you have Sheamus and Cesaro coming in, da, 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 being being awesome, continuing being the bar. Continuing taking taking my heart when you dig, Cesaro's case. When you dig a hole and you're standing in it, get out. <laughs> Don't I, dig deeper. And now we had Sheamus and Seth Stop Rollins digging. in a in a really good singles match. Yeah, it was, it, what I like about this is now it's four established singles guys now that they're in the tag team division. Now we're continuing the healing of Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, which I'm st- I'm still loving. It's one of the only things that actually is catching my interest on Raw. And, of course, you have the love of my life, Cesaro, and th- the awesome Sheamus. I-, I-, I can't talk down on Sheamus because I-, I, still- I still love Sheamus, but not as much as I love Cesaro. Huge Cesaro boner. Um <laughs> Okay. I had to continue. Go there. Continue. I had to go, hey, we're gonna talk about your boner later, fool. I hope not. <laughs> oh, oh, it's gonna be there. Um, I, I, I love that now. I like the aspect of Dean Ambrose coming in. It's like I had to come out because if I didn't come out, I'd look like an asshole. I, I like that they're actually really building in, like, good character development on these on Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose and giving us a great. Feud for Sheamus and Cesaro. Da, 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 da. Here's, here's, it's once again yeah. them expanding the tag team division in the right direction. This has parallels to me of last year with the Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho team up. Okay, because a lot of people are going around online, and I've I've been reading the dirt sheets and all that. A lot of people think that this is. The Shield re- reuniting Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose is all a ploy for Roman Reigns to get back in there and finally get over again. Who said that? A bunch of people. <laughs> You'd be surprised. So I'm like, that here's so here's crack. how It'll this work. here's how this storyline is going. Okay, this is all gonna end up being set up for a Dean Ambrose Seth Rollins match at WrestleMania. With it flipped, Dean Ambrose is the heel and Seth Rollins is the face because they're gonna get together. They're you're gonna get you're gonna get the crowd pleasing moment of them winning the tag team titles at some point. Maybe not SummerSlam, but at some point they will be the tag team champions. Okay, they're gonna, you're gonna get the crowd go going with the uh, fist bump and all that. But cracks are going to start to show around January and Dean Ambrose is going to get, is going to turn on Seth Rollins the same way that Seth Rollins turned on Dean Ambrose with a chair shot to the back leading to them losing the tag team titles. Massive heel turn for Dean 
and we get Dean versus Seth going into WrestleMania, the grudge match to end all grudge matches. That's how I see this going. But the build-up, okay, the build-up is going swell. Okay, I love the... I love how Dean... It's, it's true to character, okay? Dean Ambrose doesn't trust anybody since Seth Rollins did what he did. Seth Rollins is going to say sorry and think that Dean Ambrose is just going to come crawling back. Sorry. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> so it's like, I, al- I, I also laughed out loud when Dean Ambrose said the only reason I came out there was because I would look like an asshole if I didn't. I was like, yes. Why does nobody ever go there? <laughs> That's it. But what I like, what I also like about this is I actually had a good discussion with one, with one person on, uh, on Facebook that it's like, well, you have Roman Re- Roman Reigns uh, and Seth Rollins uh, made up quite well. Why is this, why is Dean Ambrose being the sour one being on this one? And my response to him was, well, if you look back throughout the time Seth Rollins turned heel and to where we're at now, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose had the more personal feud. Seth then, Rollins tried to end Dean Ambrose's career with bricks. Okay, they, that's like it. when the Shield initially broke up, it was mainly Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins actually feuding. They were getting the reaching the personal aspect. Where when it came, came to Roman Reigns, he was just doing his own thing because WWE, WWE, aka Vince McMahon, has the biggest heart on for him. I what I like about it is that once again, it's with Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. They are the fleshed out characters. They are the ones that actually got us invested on what's going on with each person and when, at least when it came to the shield uh, breakup so when you came to uh, where we're at today with them trying with Seth trying to heal that wound of course it's not going to be so easy he had a he had a, almost uh, a good long feud for the title with the man so good long feud for the title he tried to end I'll keep going back to it with Dude tried to on end his career. Yes. Tried to end his career. You're gonna immediately forgive him after that? I'm like, no, bitch. No. Like, <laughs> Seth Rollins said he was sorry, and I'm, like, I'm sorry. All right, I'll say it again. I'm sorry. I would be like, fuck you too. <laughs> it, it really, it really gets me invested because it's actually a nice developed story. Instead of them just with Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, they just threw them together. And it's like. Okay, we're good. Exactly. There's you know there's the too gr- much chemistry and there's too good of a story there. It's it's enough. The only time you're going to see Roman Reigns with these guys is for the inevitable Raw versus SmackDown Survivor Series tag team match. Hell, they already te- they already ruined the reunion with these three. They did it at a. Uh... Uh, tribute to the troops. Yeah, what a bogus thing that was! All of a they're, sudden, they're Dean Ambrose and Seth appara- Rollins are yeah. buddy buddy with each other. Yeah, they're apparently <laughs> like it was like, oh yeah, that, that's its own separate thing. The tribute to the troops is its own show. Don't pay attention to that. That never happened. Because so. immediately after that, he gets to Raw and says, and and basically, no, Seth Rollins, we're not cool. What? But but. Tribute yeah, to exactly. the troops. What? Exactly. That's, <laughs> that's, that's tribute to the troops. It, it's not. It's not a part of the official storyline. It's. It's the Dragon Ball Z movies, for like the Dragon Ball Z TV show. It's. It's the Broly because there's it's no the, way. It's, it's Garlic Jr. Even, not even that. It's the Tree of Might of the WWE. <laughs> But, Am I the one who's seen that movie? I liked it. Whatever. And the best, the best team to get these guys back together and get them over is, is yeah, is Seamus and Cesaro. Is the bar is the bar because let's face it, okay, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins were the bar when it came to the Shield. You looked at Roman. You look at Roman Reigns. Okay, he he would he would do the heavy lifting, but. Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins were the heart and soul of the Shield. They were the bar. Okay, mm-hmm. there's a new bar now, and and it's one sexy bar. And, uh, <laughs> I gotta. Be, I'm, I'm never and, gonna stop. And, uh, I'm never gonna stop. And it makes sense. It'll just keep growing for Cesaro. New bar versus old bar. Stop ignoring me. 
I will never acknowledge that. New oh, Bond you just did. I God win. damn it. Well, <laughs> well, speaking of the shield, we also got Roman Reigns defeating Braun Strowman and Samoa Joe. Once again. God damn it. Why? <laughs> I'll tell you why. It was a good match. It was a good match. I, it was a good match, but I hope this means that that can we can cross out Roman Reigns' name, and that's exactly winning, why this is a good thing for winning the Fatal Four Way match. That's exactly okay. why but I had no problem with this whatsoever. That's that's my hope. Okay, but once again, Mister Hardon. Okay, the he makes he makes Tarek's love for Cesaro look weak. Compared to his hard on for Roman Reigns. Okay, that's it. Okay, okay. when you said Mr. Hard on, I for a second there, I had no idea who you were talking about. Cesaro's not answering my calls. <laughs> exactly. Case in point, right there. Yeah. You gotta be curious with. You, you have to be. I'm never curious when it comes to Cesaro. Oh, okay. You need to cool it, buddy. I will not. He just he just warms my heart and warms my penis. Cold water, <laughs> cold water. Yeah. Okay, closing out Raw, we've got Big Cass and Big versus Big Show closing Raw. How the hell is this the main event? I oh are you God. serious? According according it happened. According to Dave Meltzer, the the big fo- focus point on Raw recently has been the second hour of has been the second hour, the highest rated points. For Raw has always been the second hour. Uh, arrow. The second hour. <laughs> I, I almost did it again. Second the, second, hour. the second hour. So they put the biggest match in the the uh, second hour point, and they just added the third hour because it's, hey, it's how not about that this? great a rating. But you know what? How, how about this, Sparky? If you're gonna put the main event at the end of the second hour, two hours. Come on, it's it's not rocket it's just, science. It's just, I just find it absolutely it's, ridiculous that this was the closing point to Raw, especially after we had a very lackluster pee break match with Bailey and that Nia entire Jax. third hour was pointless. It, All it, of it, it really was, <laughs> and just that the Enzo and Cass storyline is now run its course. I I can't take it. I'm done with it. Every time it's on, it's it's the same shit over and he over again. He gets murdered en- every time. Enzo. Enzo says something. Cass, well, in this case, it was Cass versus Big Show. They had a match. Enzo gets destroyed again. And it leads to a disqualification and a, and a knockout punch. What did this What did this accomplish? What, are we just going to get a handicap match for SummerSlam? I hope that's the pre-show. Cause that's the stu- That's one of the stoop. That'll be the lowest point of that of the card if it's actually on the yeah. main roster. That that'll be the pee break match between the two bi- the two title matches. If that's the case, this ma- this feud is just it's now run its course. I'm done with it. I'm sick of it. Uh, almost as much as I'm done with Jason Jordan being Kurt Angle's son, but. To be fair, nobody believed that. Even when it initially happened, no one was okay. No one cared, gave two shits about it. They were yeah. disappointed with it. Now we got an intercontinental title match. Uh, with that, when it came to that storyline, but when it came to uh, with this Big Show story, it's it's an, it's the same shit. Big Cass quote quote dis- annihilates Big Show, but I honestly I don't believe it at all. I don't believe anything that's happening in this feud. Big Cass, okay, can't cut a promo to save his life. And now he has a new theme song. He got a second theme song two weeks after. I'll be his... honest, I didn't even see this match. That, that tells you that tells you how bad the first one was. The second okay. one wasn't much better. It really was. <laughs> well, it was better, but not yeah, like not by much. <laughs> but it actually is a better theme song. Yes. It's just it's generic. It's well, generic. It can't really get worse gener- than the first one. <laughs> the first one was like the last number, the last selection of generic theme songs, and this one was number twenty-eight. <laughs> this one was that middle of the pack. It's still technically an improvement. Oh my this God. one was middle of the pack. This one is the one you. This one's the one you go by. You stop for like five seconds, maybe. No, <laughs> and at, then at move that on. point, at that point, I was done with Raw. I was tired. Not even just tired. I was just bored out of my mind. It, Raw had some really good moments, really good moments, and good matches. But it also had some shit, aka 
this. The entire third hour soured me on the show. Like, the first hour was pretty good. The second hour was was my favorite. The third hour was a pile of shit. And it actually brought... It brought the show down. I watched... Okay. <laughs> show down. Nice. I watched one match on SmackDown. I'll admit it. On the... One match from SmackDown made it the better show than Raw because I couldn't stand the third hour that bad. Mm. I guess we'll use this to transition into SmackDown. Because oh, yeah. really, there's nothing else more to say with Raw. And, there really is not. But you said you only watched the main event of SmackDown. You need to go back and watch SmackDown in its entirety. Cause yeah, as good really, as the main was event great, was, it was, honestly it was a, a great really show. good show. There really, Legit. There really wasn't, any, there wasn't anything bad. If there was any one real criticism I had, it's the, it's the fact that the Aiden English, Sami Zayn match was only not, it was not even two minutes. And, even but, so, but, but, it was but still I'm a pleasant actually, but surprise. But I gave it a, I'm giving it a pass, not just because it's Aiden English, Fool, it's your new, it's your new hubby. We're in Chris <laughs> Jericho. He's not my hubby; he's my boy. We're in Chris Jericho scarves. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, I'm a fan. Hey, if it I works, actually, it works. I, I like that they're actually giving him, giving Aiden English something to do. He's not just the Kurt Hawkins of of SmackDown. They're actually building, building something with him, and I like that Sami Zayn. Like, it, mainly what I, my criticism was merely just a nitpick. But I'm actually I'm giving it a pass because it's giving Aiden English a boost, and it's like Sami Zayn was completely caught off guard. He he wasn't really taking Aiden English seriously, and that cost him a match. And then you had the the I'm trying to think of a good name the the Canellis couple. I, I got to think of something uh, more creative than that. But they came the out. The love they, connection, <laughs> thwarted by the power of love. love. <laughs> Greatest theme song of all time. I swear to God, I, I love their theme song too. But to be perfectly honest, I wanted their theme song to be "The Power of Love" by Huey Lewis. Huey Lewis and the News. Put that. That would be great. Glo- that would put, that would be over forever. I want a remix of "Glorious" with this with this with this theme song. Just mash them together. It'll be the no. greatest thing of all no, time. No, you can't. You can't. You can't make glorious anything more perfect than it is um <laughs> but yeah it, like i said it was just really a nitpick but i mean I, I, like it's still good it's still good it's giving it's sammy Zayn actually has something going on granted it's lower car but at least it's actually something with i'm invested with aiden english i like mike mike and maria canellis i love sammy Zayn. i i'm invested i like um Shit, we still had problems with this before we started recording. The Breezango uh, segment. Uh, the Fashion Peaks. Yeah, that, let's go with Fashion Peaks. I like that. It, well, of course, that it was, was a, it weird. Was a, it was I a loved twin, it. It was a Twin Peaks reference, obviously. And it was weird. I And now, apparently, he figured out who it was that destroyed their headquarters and kidnapped Fandango. As long as it's not the, it actually is not the Ascension. I'm okay. I'll be good. If it's the Ascension, I'm actually going to be very disappointed. I wanted to... Well, if it's the Ascension again... They... Well, one thing, we... You, every were, time. you weren't here for... You weren't here for this, Brian. We were pitching out names on who it possibly could be, and we first we brought up Luke, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan just because we haven't seen them, like Dolph Ziggler, we haven't seen them in weeks. Uh, but we also threw... We also threw the idea of it being Sanity. And it gives Brizango insanity, like now that they're coming, they come up from NXT being a, a new threat for SmackDown. That'll be that would be interesting. But By the, get some new blood in the tag team division. Exactly. Yeah. So, hey, but the, the problem is, is you're going to have Sanity going for the tag team titles at uh, Takeover Brooklyn. So yeah. I don't know. I don't, so yeah, like New York Auto. Hey, you never know. Hey. It could just be Harper and Rowan because you know. Where the hell are they? <laughs> yeah. Hey, any number of things can happen. This, thankfully, the story is still ongoing. So, but we also have to talk about the opening match. Hey, when yes. you know, SmackDown actually opened with a match, and it was uh, the United States Championship with AJ Styles and Kevin Owens, with a very, very, 
quote quote controversial, but still interesting. Though. In my opinion, really weirdly executed finish, where since you didn't see it, uh, Kevin Owens was trying to get a good punch on AJ Styles. He ducks and it hit Mike Kyoto. And Mike Kyoto basically was like, oh, my eye. I can't really see what's going on. Even though first I got hit with the left eye. But when I go backstage, it, they're checking on my right eye. Continuity. Yeah. Boom. Um, I see what you did there. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Uh, and so with that, AJ Styles pins, uh, rolls up Kevin Owens. And his shoulder is obviously up. But because Mike Kyoto's eye was you know, hurt. He got the three count. And now we have for SummerSlam a, a rematch, U.S. title match, AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens with Shane McMahon as the special guest referee. Okay, that was different. Uh, at, first I, random. At, fir- no, at first I thought that Daniel Bryan was going to say he would be the special guest referee. But he's like, I got a guy. Shane! I know a guy. I know a guy. And he's standing right next to me. <laughs> and I'm just going... They are going to have a Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon fe- uh, match at WrestleMania, are they? Well, you know what? Makes sense. It makes sense. And I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm just like, yeah. is that what they're going for? And if they are, cool. Yeah. Slow build. Very, well, yeah, very slow build because they've been building this hell since Kevin Owens actually got tr- uh, moved to SmackDown. Yep. Hmm. And I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually for it. And now, take us home. No, 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 fool. We're, you're going to take us home. Uh, now we're going to bring up your giant man it's boy. Time for if you're gonna, we're re- <laughs> Oh no, he hasn't reached his climax yet. He's going to reach his climax when he talks about the ending of this match. Fool, talk about the number one contender match well, for the WWE Championship: well, Shinsuke Nakamura versus John Cena. Well, <coughs> in short. This was everything I think we all expected it to be. And more. Yeah, I bet it all was right. more for you, huh? Well, seriously now. I'm not sure what you were thinking, but in my oh, I mind... Know exactly what I'm thinking. In my mind, there was still a chance that Cena was possibly going to go on to SummerSlam. In my mind, it was... A, it was a, it was one hundred percent that Cena was going to go on to summer to SummerSlam. I was looking more at a like he was that was just because he because the talk has been since he came back for the flag match. Since, before he came back, the talk was he he was going to be the one to take the title from Jinder Mahal at SummerSlam. So he comes he comes back. He beats Rusev in the flag match. All of a sudden he and comes out he comes out to an, he comes out and announces his plans to take on Jinder Mahal at SummerSlam. I'm like, oh, here we go. They're setting it up. Then they're. I'm like, hold on. Are they really going to make Shinsuke Nakamura lose his first match on free TV to John Cena? I, I was like, it is the WWE, so I could see it. But <laughs> I guess in this case, I was thinking more with my heart on this one. Well, like, I, to an extent, I was thinking with my head and my heart. Because I was thinking, I was thinking that something was going to happen, and we we're going to get a triple threat match at some point. And you know what? That was what I was thinking too. But no, we got Shinsuke Nakamura beating John Cena clean as a whistle. Cena raises his hand, puts him over big, and now the fight is on. And now, now when I fan. think about it, when I think about it, it makes complete sense. Because who is Shinsuke feuding with? No one. right. Who was he feuding with? Baron Corbin. The money in the bank. Yep, I know what you're Hold going, it. and I was actually going to use that to tease with him. Oh, you know what? No, I, I don't ain't even care. Shinsuke, I'm calling it right now. Shinsuke wins at SummerSlam. It's me. Okay. Shinsuke wins at SummerSlam. Okay. And you know it what? That's all I mo- need to know. It makes sense. No. Sentence over. No. Shinsuke wins. No. Hold your orgasm. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Too late. <laughs> it's already here. Shinsuke Ew. wins. You're going to start doing your Santino horn again. And remember what happened last time you did that. <laughs> uh, nothing happened at all. <laughs> Randy Orton cashed in on Daniel Bryan. 
Baron Corbin's got to cash in on Shinsuke. But you know what? And Shinsuke will win it back when they have that Tokyo show. But you know what? You said but you'll that, come out with you Shinsuke just said, as the champion. You just said you had me at the those two sweet little words. Shinsuke wins. Shinsuke will be champion at some point in SummerSlam. How long he's champion? Who knows? But with the feud he just came out of, now that I'm thinking about it, this result makes more sense. It's clear to me than that Cena it's clear to winning. me that the WWE machine is now solidly, unequivocally behind Shinsuke Nakamura at this point. Oh, they've always. And for it's a been, SmackDown show, it was an awesome match. It was granted, the proof I needed to see. Granted, they obviously would have a ten times better match if it was on a pay-per-view. Even a big pick, one of the big four, they're... I think if but they were in one of the big four, yeah. they, it would definitely be a five-star match. But for, a TV, but for a TV TV, event, TV event, was, event, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah it, was it, still, was. it was really good. Like I, 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 I could possibly put it as TV match of the year. You know what? So far, that would be year. a contender for it. That would mm-hmm. be a contender. I could possibly be up. There I yet. do have to ask though about that one exploder suplex. To, the one that almost killed Cena. Yeah, <laughs> drop. He apparently it looked like Cena didn't rot, get enough rotation on that, and he landed on his neck. It was it was technically it was technically both their fault. Uh, Shinsuke didn't give him enough oomph to do it, but and also Cena didn't Cena. know it was going to be that, and he thought it was just going to be a regular back suplex, so he didn't fully go all the way. So when you saw Nakamura apologize to Cena, Cena, and you see Cena go back like, "I'm Dude, sorry, don't be sorry, yeah, don't don't be sorry," you know, because you know, and, and a, they Cena put on a great is, match, and B, it was both their yeah, fault. And, so and, plus, he's like hyper neck Cena, so you can't yeah. break his neck. So. And and let's face it, okay, Cena is well known. For being stiff, taking moves, mm-hmm. for re- for neck reasons. Okay, so it's, it's so a bunch of moves get botched because Cena take because Cena takes them stiffly. Okay, so it, it when that happens, I was like, oh, okay, there it is. Okay, we can move on now because Cena's not gonna. Cena's not got to show that he's hurt. Come on now. But even so, Cena like, break. He showed it for a little bit. Cena when it, break. When it initially happened, he definitely showed a little pain. Yeah. He's like, okay, I just, just give me, give me ten seconds. I need to catch my breath. <laughs> yeah, C- Cena in a big match situation. How many times has Cena gotten hurt in a big match situation? He takes about ten seconds, fifteen seconds. He get, he goes on with the match, finishes it. And then all of a sudden, the next day, your neck surgery out for seven months. <laughs> so, then he's back in like three weeks. Then he's back in three weeks, and you're like, "Well, what was that bullshit?" So it's it's one of those explorer suplex takes it on the neck. That makes sense. Move on. <laughs> That's it. And not for nothing. It's now a- that we know he's relatively okay, he's not going to you know die. Yeah. The narrative that came from it is just awesome. Yeah. Not, oh, it, it, it definitely helped not Shinsuke more. beat him. He absolutely looks like an absolute killer now. Those and, little kids that actually showed the clips of him, them being angry. That oh, that lost. was delicious. They'll, they'll, yeah, I bet it was. But you um, know what this match <laughs> did? You know what this match actually did to me? Like going into SummerSlam, if Jinder Mahal gets any offense, I'm calling bullshit. That's that's what this match. I've already heard speculation. I've already heard speculation that they're gonna do like a if they're gonna just gonna do like a, a Brock Goldberg thing and they're gonna have him beat him like oh, like Kinshasa right out of the no, gate. No, they're gonna and, do they're gonna do a this is gonna piss you off. This reference is gonna piss you off. They're gonna do a Sheamus Daniel Bryan. WrestleMania. Hey, as long as it works the other <laughs> way with someone that's... Yeah. Oh, even better. Even gonna, better. They're going to do a Triple H Ultimate Warrior. No, I can see them... <laughs> he's because gonna, he's going to do... Jinder Mahal's going to be doing sing, his... Sing 1 and Sing 2 are going to distract Nakamura in the beginning. Uh, Mahal's going to hit his finishing move and Nakamura's just going to get back. He's like, no. <laughs> no, I can see Jinder Mahal doing his whole thing where he's where he's taking off. All of his, all of what he comes down to the ring in, he's taking that off real slow. He's giving it to the Singh brothers. Okay, they get down from the ramp. 
the, the, he gets that he turns around, boom, get shot, <laughs> and it's done. I'd be and you know what? I'd be okay with that. <laughs> I'd be okay I mean, with it too. But it's it's one of those. It's, you see that match. You see what Shinsuke does to John motherfucking Cena. Okay, and 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 you look at the TV, and you're like. He's going up against Jinder Mahal for the WWE title at SummerSlam. If that dude gets any offense after what he just did to John Cena, I'm calling bullshit. Okay, that's it. Here's, uh. Now here's the million dollar question. Now that they're actually having two foreigners go for the WWE Championship... Gender cannot use the evil foreigner gimmick. You you all boo me because I look different, because I talk different. At someone point, he can do the evil foreigner and the evil foreigner versus the good foreigner. You you really can't do that. You hate me because I look different. Oh. 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 You hate me because I talk different. Oh. Oh. He barely even speaks English. You You, shut the fuck up. (laughs) You hate me because I'm not American. Oh. Oh. Yeah, this isn't going to work. I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> and then Shinsuke just boots him, and it's done. And then we're never going to see the great cheese again. Apparently, we're, never, we're not even going to see the great, great cheese anyway. I Apparently, honestly, that was just a one-time deal. I honestly kind of figured, so I'm fine with that. that actually so that entire pay-per-view was pointless. Now. That, made, that, actually, <laughs> that actually pissed me off even more. That whole, it just brought me down. Happen. It just brought me down from a cliche. It, from a clean shaven for battleground to a white screen of nothing. <laughs> that, there's oh, nothing. Brother. That show was nothing at all. The New Day won the tag team titles, but nothing. <laughs> That's it. Hey, we can, even so. But you can only go up from here. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. There's so much to look forward to just out of all these outcomes that SummerSlam is going to be absolutely amazing. I guess it's just clear as day who won the week. When it came to Raw versus SmackDown. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. It was, SmackDown it was by down. a country mile. It was SmackDown, SmackDown, hands down. SmackDown got me interested in SummerSlam because I thought for sure that we were going to go into SummerSlam with Roman Reigns and John Cena in the main events for the titles. And, I'm get, and I was just going to be like, oh, same shit, different year. You're only half right. So Not so much. <laughs> but as soon, as soon as Shinsuke pulled it out, I'm like, oh. Oh, pleasant surprise. Crazy. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Good. All right. We I'm need to stop with all the phrasing. I'm a fool with like that. Oh. I'm not that big of a fan of him, sir. Sure you are. Don't he lie. Says the man wearing uh, wearing the strong style T-shirt, which anyone can buy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And you brought it to to record on this particular night. Yeah, that's a gloat. <laughs> How much you love him, How much- Cesaro. Damn fucking right. My one F bomb on the show. All right. You've obviously <laughs> clearly heard what we've got to think about this week in wrestling. Now it's your turn. Now it's your turn to join the conversation. Let us know what you thought about this week in wrestling and our comments on this, just on, anywhere on the internet. Leave us a comment. Give us a thumbs up if you like what you hear. Feel free to subscribe if you like to hear more every single week. You can also check us out on Facebook. Just run a search for The Scholars of Wrestling Show. Like us there. Check us out. And, of course, for added funsies, you can also check us out on Twitter. Yes, I said funsies. I don't yeah, care. I know you did. It's you late did, when we're did, taping this. I don't too. care. I, I, you did it last week, too. I'm just... I'm, I guess I just got to deal with it. Yes, you do. So you know where you can deal with this? You can deal with it on your on our main page at... Follow us at scholars ow for all the latest episode uploads and you can also check us out on our personal twitter accounts where we throw in random wrestling commentary and live tweets into the ether at whatever show we're watching fool where can they reach you you can reach me at the avatar brian where can they reach you you can reach me at atomic beanpole and you can reach me at i'm robbie rage Follow us, join the conversation, and join all the fun. And with that, another episode of Scholars of Wrestling is in the books. Gearing up for another week in wrestling. The road to to SummerSlam. I, wow, I'm getting sleepy. The road to SummerSlam continues on. You know who we are. 
We are the Scholars of Wrestling, and you have just been schooled. You're, You're welcome. welcome. This makes me feel bad that I actually have to miss SummerSlam this year. Oh, uh, because we'll be in London. Yeah, perfect. It's it's the perfect compromise. But you're not there yet, so onward to SummerSlam. Yay! Yay!